Hello. I thought I would introduce a little light relief into these dark days of ours with a bit of PETA nuttery. PETA, the uh, something for the ethical treatment of animals. I wonder what the P stands for. Get that thought out of your mind. OK, so uh, this is an interesting new ploy they have. Peter calls for sex strike against meat-eating men to save the world. So, you know, it's only men who eat meat, uh, just for your information. Cries for a bedroom ban against carnivorous males have caused outrage in Germany, which is famous for its love of sausages. Women should impose a sex ban on men who eat meat because they are responsible for more greenhouse gas emissions, an animal rights group said on Wednesday. I don't know whether it's the meat that's causing the men to emit greenhouse gases, but I'm not going to go into that right now. The call for a sex strike on carnivorous males has caused outrage in Germany. Uh, women must go on a sex strike to save the world, Peter said, before calling for a bedroom ban for all meat-eating men. OK, yeah, well, there'll be a double bedroom ban because when men don't eat meat, um, there might not be that much bedroom action either. Uh, the German branch of Peter pointed to research last year from PLOS1, well, that's what it says here. A scientific journal which showed men caused 41% more pollution than women because they eat more meat. You know, an avocado coming from South America uses a lot more of the world's resources than a, uh, um, a cut of lamb from up the hill, up the road. So... I don't know where they got these results from, but when when we eat soy products here in Britain, soybeans are not native to this country. And most, uh, I believe all soybeans uh, are imported. So even if soy burgers are made in the United Kingdom, they will have had to have started from great mounds of soybeans which have been shipped from, I suppose, the USA. So I cannot see how meat would be, le would be more damaging than that. Peter said that such toxic masculinity required enforced chastity and even a ban on having children. Every child not born would save 58.6 tonnes of CO2 a year, it said. Yeah, well, if we set off a nuclear bomb and killed everyone on the planet, that would save CO2 as well. It's obvious from this paragraph here that Peter isn't anti-man and it's not anti-carnivore. Uh, it's just anti-human. They have the idea that humans are a blight on the planet. Well, we're here. We are part of what this planet produced. So uh, we, uh, we are not a blight, we are part of the natural process. And now listen to this, this disgraceful uh, description that one of the Peter representatives said. We all know them, the suburban fathers with beer bottles and barbecue tongs sizzling 70 cent sausages on their 700 euro grill, uh, Daniel Cox <laughs> Uh, of Peter Germany said as he accused dads of proving their manhood through conspicuous meat consumption. This is a person who hates humanity. Um, and then he says, the courgette added by the visitor is eyed with suspicion and only reluctantly tolerated, he said. Uh, well, no, not necessarily. I mean, you are intolerant, uh, Mr. Cox, but uh, there are many people who eat meat who are perfectly tolerant and don't mind anyone who is foolish enough to eat a courgette grilled on a barbecue. Oh, God. I mean, I don't eat meat. I mean, right. I have lots of allergies. 
So I can't eat beans and lentils and nuts. I am allergic to all sorts of things. So I do eat chicken and fish, but I, I really can't bring myself to eat lamb and um, beef. I, I just can't do it. However, I don't blame other people who do. That's their choice. And I do appreciate that uh, some things are better, uh, that being a carnivore can be better and a better diet than being a vegetarian. We have access to a lot of vegetables nowadays, so people are eating less meat anyway than they used to, than they, they had to when uh, perhaps in the winter time all you got was turnips and, uh, and beef. Okay, so to make matters worse, <laughs> okay, they have their, um, their little uh, joke here. Peter also calls for a hefty meat tax of 41% for men to save the planet from global warning, warming emissions caused by agriculture. And as I said, Agriculture, they're not talking about agriculture, they're talking about food. And they're not talking about food, they're talking about people eating. And they're not talking about people eating, what they want is for fewer people to be on the planet. They are basically anti-human. And as I said, eating meat that's properly curated uh, there's, is probably a lot less bad for the planet than eating imported avocados, soybeans, uh, lentils from India and all, all the rest of it or wherever lentils grow. And it says here, in the UK, agriculture was responsible for 11% of the UK's total emissions in 2020 and is the fifth biggest sector for polluting greenhouse gases. So yes, when people live and when they eat, they have an effect. That doesn't mean to say it's bad. Uh, polluting uh, greenhouse gases aren't necessarily polluting. A lot of people talk about how terrible CO2 is, forgetting that plants need CO2 to grow. That we refer to that as a polluting gas when it is actually not a polluting gas. Now, I want to get on to the, um, to the idea of, of the sex strike because uh, this in itself is rather interesting. At the end of this article, it is pointed out that uh, that in Aristophanes' play Lysistrata, women bring about the end of the Peloponnesian War by refusing their partners' amorous advances. So I have a, a point to make here. The men are stronger than the women. If the women refuse their advances, you might point out that the men could just take what they wanted, but they don't in the play. And um, in uh, and then here we have another situation. In 20, 2003, a sex strike helped end Liberia's brutal civil war, which earned organiser Lema Gaboi a Nobel Peace Prize. So she organised a sex strike of Liberian women to bring about the end of the Liberian war and it worked. But you have to consider uh, that why it worked. It worked because the men did not just take from the women what they wanted. In other words, in general, the men acted in a civilised way. Even though the Liberian civil war was the most horrible uh, conflict. So you have to look at the men's relationship to the women here. They talk about toxic masculinity. I don't call that toxic at all. It sounds extremely civilised and uh, benign. And But also you have to consider something else. Men do not want war any more than women. The only problem is that, in general, they don't like war 
It disrupts things. So when the women went on a sex strike in support of making peace, I think that probably was cooperated with by the men who didn't want to continue the war anyway. And in the uh, Lysistrata, the men aren't, I mean, they, they've got into the habit of fighting, but they in a way cooperate with the women. That is, they don't take from the women what they desire because part of them doesn't desire the war either. And this is a, a good way of getting out of it. Uh, men do find themselves in this uh, uh, masculine cycle of not backing down, but they can use this. So the, the fact that the Liberian War ended because the ladies decided to um, uh, refrain and in large got the uh, cooperation of the men, that was because the men wanted to go along with it. Grilling sausages, that's not going to work. And uh, the fact that Peter is asking women to do this shows just how, well, first of all, as I said, how anti-human they are, but secondly, how they do not seem to understand human nature. In fact, they don't understand animal nature either from what I've heard of them. And in many ways, they don't understand the cycle of nature generally. They are just impractical people who feel that they can impose their ideas on the rest of the world. And frankly, I think the only refraining we should do with people like that is to refrain to have any dialogue with them because they don't make sense. All right, I'm Granny Opterix. I am to be found on YouTube, Rumble, Bitchute and Minds. Uh, please help my channel by liking, sharing and subscribing. If you're on YouTube, especially check your subscription uh, because uh, YouTube sometimes doesn't uh, keep the subscription going. And also you can subscribe to uh, me on at Granny Opterix uh, on Twitter, Gab and Parlor, because that's um, where I let you know when I've uploaded a video. Right, that's it. Oh, yes. And also you can help my channel by uh, contributing buy me a coffee or one of the links below for helping my channel along. OK, till next time. Why not treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of merch? The mugs and t-shirts come in the Granny Opterix design or Granbo with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. Go to www.grannyopteryx.com and whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like, subscribe and share, share, share.